Champions Mojo is part of the CG Sports Network. Welcome to the award-winning Champions Mojo, hosted by two world record-holding athletes and health, life, and leadership coaches. Be inspired as you listen to Conversations with Champions. And now, your hosts, Kelly Palace and Maria Parker. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo podcast. And as usual, I am co-hosting with Maria Parker. Hello, Maria. Hello, sister. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing so great. We are going to give our guest the great introduction she deserves, but she's sitting there with us. So let's welcome her to the show. Courtney Sheely Hart, welcome to Champions Mojo. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, Maria, you know I've been talking about getting Courtney on the show for like a year because yeah. um, she since, is. A, I think since we started the show, you've been talking. Yeah, about Yeah, she's on the show. just like um, you know, she's she's one of my heroes. She's in a very elite club, and we're going to go into that more. Courtney is in her eleventh year as the head swim coach at Georgia Tech, and for most of those years, she has been the only woman in the entire NCAA Division One that coaches a combined men's and women's program. And, you know, just think of the sport of basketball where both genders play the sport, but there are very few, if any, women coaching men, especially at the D1 head coach level. But Courtney not only coaches both genders, but her men's team is one of the best in the nation. According to this week's Swim Swam Swimulator, which is an early stat on where teams might finish at the NCAA championships, her Yellow Jacket men are predicted to finish as the seventh best team in the nation. So Coach Hart is really building the program at Georgia Tech. Maria, can you share a little bit more about Courtney? Sure, Kelly. At Georgia Tech, she's coached nearly 50 NCAA championship participants, multiple NCAA All-American and ACC champions, and under Coach Hart, 40, at least 40, we're not really sure, program records have been broken. (laughs) She isn't just a great coach as she understands swimming, from in the water as well. Courtney was herself a two-time Olympic gold medalist, 26-time NCAA All-American, five-time NCAA champion, and 19-time SEC champion while at the University of Georgia. She also combines her professional success with a busy personal life as a parent of two children with her husband, Justin. So let's find out how this champion leads herself and others to such great heights. Yes. So thank you for that, Maria and Courtney. Um, one thing, and uh, you know, we, we have more than just swimmers. We have a lot of people who are just athletes and it, a little known fact is Courtney also played D1 volleyball at Georgia as well. She's one of the only two sport athletes. So yes, we love her as a swimmer, but the volleyball players love her as a volleyball player. So Courtney, what is happening at Georgia Tech uh, with the pandemic going on and your team's training and competing? So give us an update about the uh, yellow jacket life there. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously this has been a very crazy and different year, but I'm very thankful for all the people in our athletic administration for helping us stay in the pool. I mean, that has been a priority um, since this all went down last March, which is kind of crazy to think that it's been 10 months ago. Um, I'll never forget sitting in the um, carpool line to pick up my child, and I got a phone call from our AD, and it's like, we need to have a meeting with the whole staff in 30 minutes. And I was like, man, we've never, you know, had that. And so, um, this was all coming down the pipe, like right before NCAAs. I think in fact, like maybe a couple of days before women's NCAAs and we had two women qualified. And so, you know, a, a bit of a bummer at that time, but really mm-hmm. having to adjust and really thankful for, again, our administration and, um, helping us continue to stay in the pool. Uh, there was a bit of time when we were out of the pool and then we started to be honest with you in a little summer league pool, uh, here in Atlanta, once that opened up, because it was outdoors. And so we were able to get some time there. And then uh, Georgia Tech opened up for us uh, right after 4th of July. And so anybody that was in town kind of came and started training. And then we got everybody back to campus. We weren't sure uh, if we were going to be able to get everybody back and what that was going to look like. But um, we've done that. And we've done a really good job of uh, you know, maintaining uh, health and safety of our student athletes while continuing to train. So I'm super grateful for that opportunity and looking forward to championship season here. Oh, that's yeah, great. definitely coming up. So Courtney, obviously you are a special kind of leader. I mean, it's not just um, coaching men that you're a woman, but even coaching women in the NCAA, there are very few women even coaching women in, in the sport of swimming. So what are your thoughts on what leadership is and what it looks like and what's gotten you where you are as this amazing leader of both men and women? 
Sure. Well, I had some great role models growing up. So, you know, definitely my parents were role models for me and some of my coaches were role models for me. Um, but I think it's a total team effort. I mean, anytime anybody asked me what my favorite part of swimming was, it was the relays, right? It was, uh, it was being on the end of a relay. And to be honest with you, maybe, maybe running somebody down, having that opportunity <laughs> to kind of run somebody down. I love that. I love that pressure. And so um, it, when I got to the coaching realm, it was really a team effort. We have a great staff here at Georgia Tech and we all have our strengths and it's in different areas and we really work well together. We uh, hang out together outside the pool. Um, it is like a family for us. And so I think my successes certainly can be contributed to the team that we have both in coaches and in athletes um, as we work together. I'm curious, you know, you, you weren't always a swim coach. It's, it can look, at, look like it when we look at your bio, you were a swimmer, then you were a coach. But I know there was a little time in there where you were a professional beach volleyball player. <laughs> so tell us, tell us where, about coming into coaching. Was that something that you thought even as a young swimmer that you thought you'd like to do? Yeah, great question. So growing up uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, I did summer league coaching. So I was the assistant coach, kind of, it was really a good job that allowed me to continue to train, but make a little money on the side. And so, as you mentioned before, I made the 2000 Olympic team and had a wonderful experience, uh, won two gold medals on two relays. And so that was amazing. And then continued to train for 2004. Um, I did miss the 2004 team, which was a bit of a bummer. And actually I started a job uh, here in Atlanta and it was lasted about a month and I still had this competitive fire in me, but I knew I was done swimming, right? Like I had achieved the goal in 2000. I went for it in 2004, unfortunately missed. And so I know how amazing it is when people make two Olympics because it's not easy. <laughs> and I still had a competitive fire in me. So I decided uh, to move out to California and play professional beach volleyball. I was a swim coach out there, the, uh, one of the local club teams. And um, so it supported my habit of uh, trying to play volleyball. I had a great year, but uh, California is uh, a bit expensive <laughs> and uh, I had no health insurance. <laughs> so my parents were like, okay, probably time to make a decision here. And um, Kelly, I know, knows Beth Harrell. So who was at the University of South Carolina prior to, um, you know, me when I was in high school and Beth had recruited me and I went on an official visit and I decided I needed to get a little bit further away from home, but Beth has always been a, a role model and a friend of mine. And so as I was kind of wrapping up my volleyball career, I reached out to Beth and I said, I think I'd really like to get into college coaching. Do you have any advice or any thoughts? And she's like, yeah, come coach with me. So I packed up and moved back across the country to Jacksonville, Florida, and was uh, Beth's assistant coach at University of North Florida for a year. Yeah, Beth uh, Harrell was one of my role models too. She's a li little bit older than I am, but uh, I swam. We both swam in Northern Virginia together, and she was definitely one of the earlier, you know, women coaches that did well. So that so, when you're thinking of that, um, Courtney, about people that kind of mentored you, um, when you're coaching and and mentoring your swimmers, what tell us about your culture there at Georgia Tech? Like, what what is what is a um, you know, what is swimming for Courtney Sheely Hart like? Yeah. So, you know, as a swimmer, I was able to achieve all my goals and my dreams in the pool. I made it to the Olympics. I won the two gold medals. Um, I got to be on that podium here, the national anthem. So as I got into coaching, my philosophy has always been help others achieve their goals and their dreams, both in and out of the pool. And no matter what that is, not everybody necessarily wants to be at the Olympics, but if that's ACC champion or NCAA champion, whatever that goal is for that individual to really uh, push them and motivate them to help them achieve their goals and their dreams. So I get to be on the other side of it now, which is really cool. What's an effective technique for helping uh, your swimmers and the people that you interact with for achieving their dreams? I mean, is there, is there a certain thing you do or say? Yeah. So setting goals. I mean, we set goals each year. Um, I, I think I'm a pretty positive coach. I am a very competitive coach. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> um, they know that I don't like to lose. Uh, but really setting those goals from the beginning. Three things we talk about here at Georgia Tech is being accountable, committed, and competitive. And that's what we're looking for. And it is a true family for us. And we're looking to uphold those values um, on a daily basis. Nice, nice. So yeah, you're, you, you're very in touch with your competitiveness as an athlete and as a, as a coach, obviously. Uh, is is um, that, you know, what, what besides competitiveness is a quality of a champion? I think somebody that's obviously willing to put the work in, not just be competitive, but put the work in. 
I, um, it's always interesting now because nutrition plays a huge role. It did not play a big role when I swam, right? Like I was eating fast right. food and, you know, there was no, there was no recovery, you know, so that's a big piece now, the ice baths and the, um, you know, the rolling out. So I think uh, sports have evolved so much and specifically speaking of the sport of swimming, the nutrition and the recovery piece and just really um, putting all of that together and, and making good choices all the time so that you can achieve your goals. And so uh, it's definitely a different an evolving world for sure. Uh, because like I said, I would go eat fast food and not think two things about it because that's what you did. You, there wasn't a lot of research on it. And now there's a ton more research, both from the recovery side, the nutrition side, the mental health side, that's a big piece now. Um, you know, we, we really are, are pushing the mental health side of things here at Georgia Tech. We have a full, full time sports psychologist that we um, use. We also have an outside consultant that we're using because this is obviously a unique time um, it's an interesting time to be a college athlete, right? You don't really, if you're following all the social distancing rules and everything, college looks a little different right now. And so being able to help them through that has been really important. Yeah. So those are, those are a lot of great techniques, techniques that you guys are getting to use at Georgia Tech. And so prior to all this, you know, high speed uh, sports medicine and technology that we have, you Courtney, have just achieved so much in your life as an athlete and then, you know, in the business world. I mean, running running an NCAA Division I program, even a single program, is a huge business, but running a double program is, is even bigger. So what traits, maybe maybe two or three, that are really Courtney Sheely Hart's specialty? Like, what has made you so successful? Well, I feel like I'm really organized. So I, I'll never forget when I when the head coach here at Georgia Tech left and I was like, I just don't know if I'm ready. And I talked to a couple mentors and they were like, apply, you know, at least go through the process. And um, so I put my resume together. I put everything that I could, that I could think of to, to hand to the AD as I went through this interview process. And I got more into it as it went along. And um, so being organized is a big deal. I feel like I'm a good communicator. So I think those are probably two big traits for me. Um, and that evolves, right? Because it used to be pick up, pick up the phone, talk to somebody face to face. Now it's text messaging. And I would prefer to talk to somebody, but uh, this generation is texters. So just evolving and adapting to that type of uh, person and athlete has, has been a challenge. And I like a challenge. I think that I, what I really enjoy about coaching is that it can be different every day. It doesn't look the same every day. I think if I had to sit behind a desk and do the same thing every day, I, I wouldn't enjoy it. And so I really enjoy you know, again, the organization, the communication and the challenge every single day. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Have you ever had any major obstacles that you've had to overcome? Sure. I mean, I, you know, as a female, I have a voice and I use my voice, but I don't necessarily know if it is heard all the time. Yeah. And I can't yeah. really give a specific example, but, um, as I'm in coaches meetings or I was on the NCAA committee for three years, which I really enjoyed that piece. Uh, I feel like I always spoke and, and used my voice, but I'm not sure if it was always heard. Right. Right. Yeah. How, 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 how can you, that's, that's a, this is a really great question. Uh, and, and I think a lot of women in, in powerful positions feel this way. I, I run a business and I've often wondered, wait, are they not listening to me? Cause I'm, not saying the right thing or, or are they not listening to me because I'm, you know, because I'm a woman. <laughs> and so how, how do you walk that line where you don't want to be, you don't want to assume that, you know, that I'm not being treated fairly because I'm a woman. Um, but you also, like you say, want to use your voice. Right. I think for me, it's just the confidence to continue to use my voice, whether it's heard or not. I think that it makes me know at the end of the day that I said what I thought needed to be said. Um, I have been an athlete at an elite level, and there are certainly some people out there who have not. And um, I can go to bed at night knowing that I had the confidence to use my voice, whether it was heard or not. Is this something that you can uh, help your mentees and your swimmers with? Is... I try to. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think there's a, a, you know, not necessarily a right and a wrong way to have a voice, but I think that there may be a better way to have a voice. Does that make sense? I, I don't go in with any aggression personally. I don't go any in with any specific agenda. Just, you know, here are my thoughts. Yeah. 
And Courtney, I, um, I want to ask you maybe what, so you can be thinking of what, what can women do? Because I, I, I'm going to tell you a story and I know if we have regular listeners, they're going to be like, oh no, not this story again, Kelly, <laughs> but I have, I have to tell you because I don't think you know this. I know that you don't know this story. So you were a little swimmer swimming in the pool at Columbia, South Carolina for Gamecock Aquatics when I was the head women's coach of the University of South Carolina Women's Swimming. So when I got that job, I was introduced to the team and brought out, you know, on deck and I had, you know, outshined or been hired over two men, but I had been an all American swimmer. I had my master's degree. I had five years of coaching as a, you know, an associate head coach. And I was the most qualified person for the job. So um, when they brought me out, I didn't get hired because I was a woman. And that's exactly what the athletic director at South Carolina told me. We didn't hire you because you're a woman. We hired you because you were the most qualified. So my new team is sitting on the bleachers and you know, the bleachers right there next to the diving well. And they're sitting there and the athletic director brings me out and sits, you know, introduces me as the new head coach. And most of them have their arms crossed, you know, their body language is not good. And I don't know if you remember, uh, Anne-Marie Wozniak. So, um, she was a beautiful, all American, wonderful, ended up being, you know, a captain and swam really great for me. And I just had a great relationship with her, but she was a leader. She spoke up and I said, you know, what's going on? You know, why, why am I getting this vibe? And she said, we don't want to swim for a woman. And that was happening on the deck while you were a swimmer there. And so then I just did the normal thing was, well, Anne Marie, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, well, you know, when you get out of college, well, I, I want to be a lawyer or, you know, when, what do you want to be? I want to be a doctor. I want to be, you know, this, do you, do you want to not have clients come to you because you're a woman? Right. And so they all kind of got it and they gave me a chance, but even, you know, 20 years ago, that was the attitude. And I think, I don't know if that is part of the reason, but they're still, even they're, the numbers in women's NCAA coaching has actually gone down. Yeah. So it, it, there were more women head coaches on deck 20 years ago when I was there than now when you're there. And so what can, what's going on? What can we do? Yeah. You know, I think that's a great question. And I'll, I'll speak from personal experience. I, I could not do this without my husband's support. And he is, um, he has three degrees. He's a lawyer by trait, but he has decided to support me and my goals and my vision and my dream. And so I, I absolutely could not do it without his support. I feel like um, there are probably quite a few people out there that don't have that support because um, right now we're in COVID, right? My children are in third grade and kindergarten. They have not had the opportunity to go to school. They've been virtual the whole time. Guess who's doing it? My husband's doing it. I can't be in two places. He's like, I got this. He is the most supportive person I've ever met in my entire life. I've definitely had boyfriends along the way that were intimidated by me, that were, you know, scared about my success, whether that be in the pool, out of the pool, whatever. He is not like that. And I can 100% say without my support system being my parents and my husband as my number one, I, would, I wouldn't be able to do this um, because it is. I, you know, I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Fridays for 12 hours sometimes um, because I live in Atlanta, so we have chosen to live kind of outside the perimeter because we, you know, have a bigger house and bigger yard and all that. So I don't go home in between unless I absolutely need to because it's not an easy trip. I don't live in a small college town where I can just hop home in two minutes and hop back. I stay in the office. And so um, who's at home supporting our home? But my husband. And so I think it comes, starts with your um, internal support system. But I also think, you know, and I know that USA Swimming and there are some other, um, entities out there that have tried to create a mentor mentee program. Um, I know that um, Susan Teeter does a women's summit. I know that that has kind of started. Um, and so I just think there need to be more opportunities to support each other. I don't know how much support women get out there from each other and certainly not from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So getting the right partner for sure. Just if you're really passionate about coaching and this could be not just swim coaching, but other coaching, sure. you, you find that partner, you say, this is so important to me. And I, I really want to do this and it's going to require a lot from both of us. So, um, I, I think that's a great, you know, that's a great way to look at it. Maria, you're, you look like you're really <laughs> going to say something. <laughs> well, I think this is really interesting question because, because of your job, you really need support right? I mean, because as you've just pointed out, you've got long hours you, and I know you travel a lot uh, in your position, Courtney. Um, 
And so I, I guess what I hear you saying is, uh, you know, if you're going to be in a job, if, you're, if your passion is to do something like this, you're going to need to have somebody who's willing to, and also want to have a family, and you're going to have to have, need somebody who's willing to support you um, from home. So I think, I think this is, that's an interesting thing. Men rarely talk about that. You know, this, isn't it interesting that we're having this discussion and, you know, there's, you hardly, you wouldn't hear a man talking to another man saying, make sure that you marry a woman who's, you know, going to be really supportive of you and take care of the kids while you're off, you know, doing this or doing that. Yeah. Um, so I think the conversation, and I think it's interesting because my children are, three of them are, I have four children, three are married. One is, is about to get, is, is considering marriage. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've wondered about this, like, this is a conversation we need to have with our kids. Like when you're choosing a partner for life, you know, you guys got to kind of work out, are you both going to have really, you know, high level careers that are going to take you away and then you're going to have kids and, you know, who's going to be the support? This, you know, I just think it's an interesting question that, um, you know, as I said, I don't believe uh, we, we've had when it was a male dominated world. Um, that's just a comment, not really a question. <laughs> um, well, this is a conversation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's great personal experience. So everybody may be different. That's just what has worked for me and for yeah. us. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's and, beautiful. I mean, it, it's allowed you to, to succeed, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's allowed me to keep going because. Oh, Courtney, I'm, one thing um, we wanted to talk with you about. One thing we wanted to talk with you about is confidence. So one interesting thing that we find is a commonality that we, you know, we've talked to, you know, I, I don't know, more than five or six Olympic coaches and then a lot of top division one, you know, head coaches. And they say that confidence is an issue with a lot of women swimmers. Oh, yeah. Interesting. And so you obviously, I, I think this confidence ties into your ability to lead a men's and women's team. So what are your thoughts on confidence? Is it something that can be built? Is it something that can be developed, et cetera? Just would love to know your thoughts on confidence. Yeah, I certainly think it can be built. And I think it's built on experiences. Uh, that, that's again, specific to me. You know, I was, uh, you know, I tried out for the 1996 Olympics and I was seventh in the 50 freestyle. I think I missed that team by seven tenths of a second. Oof. But you know what? I was like, I'm not giving up because there's a quote and it's not my quote, but I hate to uh, lose more than I love to win. That's me. <laughs> so, and I have built that confidence through my experiences through sports. I mean, I would hundred percent say sports have given me my confidence and it hasn't always been success. It's been failures too, but what do you do with those failures? So in 1996, I was able to go to college. We kicked butt in college you know, my senior year leading up to trials. So in March, I was in Stubbley Swimmer of the Year. I was AC, uh, in SEC Swimmer of the Year. You know, I had had a lot of great success that year. So I had that confidence going in. And, you know, I personally don't see myself as a female coach, you know, a, a one of only. I see myself as a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's as, as it should be. <laughs> yes, as it should be, as it should be. Yes, so... Um, what do you see as the traits that um, other champions generally have? Like the, you know, that if you, if you could recruit your ideal, here are the three traits that I want champions to have. What would they be? Accountable, committed, and competitive. I okay. think that, that's okay. what we use with our team. And that's what I think helps build champions and helps everybody achieve their goals and their dreams. Those three things I think are, are really important to success. Does that convey to the rest of your life, to your, to your, the people that you work with, to your family, those three things, accountable, committed, and what was the third? Sorry. Competitive. Competitive. Yeah. That's Maria. You, you're that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're all three of them. <laughs> Thank you. My Kelly. goal is that it, it, it's a value for my whole life, not just for my coaching and sporting life. That's, that's me. I don't like to do something that I can't give a hundred percent to. I, I, I have a hard time internally when I'm pulled in multiple different directions, which is happening right now with life, but that's okay. Um, but I like to give a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do when, I mean, I think this is a, you're of the age, you know, we were talking a little bit before the show where we're, we're, we're taking care of more than our jobs right now. We're taking care of other family members. You know, what do you do when, you know, when you don't have enough, um, you know, to, to, to be the best in every aspect of your life, how do you manage it? So I, I believe in self-care. I really do. I think that's a big piece for me personally. Um, you know, I like to, to go get a pedicure. feels really good. You know, I like to go get my hair cut. 
um, you know, just do something just for me, self-care and kind of decompress. Um, I really try not to do too much at night when I'm home with my family uh, because I am here all day. So I'm very conscious that I try not to make too many recruiting calls at night unless they've already gone to bed. So when I get home, I really try to be present at home. Um, and when I'm pulled in too many different directions, I go to bed at like eight o'clock at night, try to get a really good night's sleep. <laughs> oh, that's such great advice. I love it. <laughs> that self-care is huge. That is, that is. And, and not just that, but, but compartmentalizing things. That's such a great tip. You know, I, I, I work and my work, I work at my home. I, you know, I'm home. So that's great. And that, and that right there was the answer to the question of what rituals and routines do you yeah, do? Yeah, but do, which, there are others. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, I'm, besides I'm, that, what else? Yeah, you know, I get up in the morning and it's funny. So the night before I set out what I'm going to wear, I get the coffee maker set. I get all the breakfast stuff set out because I try to be quiet because my family's still sleeping, but it gives me a little bit more time to sleep. I can get up at like 5.07 instead of five o'clock. And that, <laughs> that adds up. That's beautiful. So um, I, again, that kind of probably comes back to the organized uh, part of me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do try to get to bed fairly early, um, you know, especially when I've had the long day or I know I got a long day the next day, um, you know, get the kids to bed, spend some time with my husband, Justin, because that's the time we get to spend together and kind of catch up and then um, head to bed. Usually sometime, honestly, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, I'm, I'm usually in bed, so. That's that great. Beautiful. So Courtney, what are you, what are a few of the things that you're most proud of um, in your career or at Georgia Tech or just in general? I think I'll start with, um, you know, obviously uh, being on a great college team, winning an NCAA championship on a college team for the first time for that team. Um, you know, University of Georgia had never won an NCAA championship. So it'd be a part of building that program was really cool. And I, was, I actually, you know, always think of that, you know, I was able to help build a program there as a swimmer. So it's been awesome to kind of help build a program here as a coach. And so I'm really proud of both those things, helping build two different programs, one as an athlete and one as a coach. Um, the two, the two gold medals rank up there from an athletic perspective, right? So that's just, uh, it was an amazing experience. And obviously being on that foreign freestyle relay with Jenny Thompson, Dara Torres and Amy Van Dyke and Jenny broke a, a record on that relay with how many medals she had won. I think Dara broke a record with, you know, how, um, old she was on that relay. <laughs> considered an older lady. And so, um, you know, that was kind of fun and, um, my family, you know, I, I'm really proud of my family. I think that um, we have two great kids. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're kind, uh, they're loving. Um, and I, I hope that we're doing a good job with those two. So that's wonderful. wonderful. And, and also, I, aren't your yellow jackets like super academic stars as well? Yeah, that's a great point. I think one of the, one of the things here we, we talk about at Georgia Tech is most people don't get to go professional sport of swimming. So we are trying to help set you up to be successful for the rest of your life, not just the four years you're here at Georgia Tech, but really set you up to be successful for the rest of your life. And we have a great program called the Total Person Program here at Georgia Tech, and it's an athletic department program. And they really, networking is a big deal, you know, business dinners, um, you know, how the etiquette for business dinners and, you know, getting jobs and writing resumes and having business cards made is a really big deal here. And so academics has certainly played a big role, uh, you know, while they're here for the four years, but really setting them up to be successful for the rest of your life. We've had several postgraduate ACC scholars, which is awesome. Our women's team has been the top GPA in the athletic department. I believe we're going on five semesters. They had a record uh, 3.64 GPA this past uh, fall semester. And um, that's pretty amazing because this is not an easy place to go to school. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I would have done well at school here. <laughs> Me either. So, um, but it's a demanding they're, athletic they're, program. Yeah, they are. They're this is, this is a strong academic institution and they're balancing out at a high level and I'm super proud of them. That's so great. That's awesome. Well, I, I got a question. You, you've done so many things and you've been, you've, you've had some amazing personal performance, but you've also observed up close and personal some uh, you know amazing things what story has inspired you the most that's hard for me yeah i don't have one particular that stands out i mean i've had so many throughout the years um that i don't really have one that stands out for me uh i just i i think it again it changes every year and i get to see new things every year um i'm super excited about this year 
Um, I don't think I have anything specific that stands out. Is there, is there just a, a recent or maybe in the last couple of years, a, a student athlete or something that they did something you're like, wow, that's just so fabulous. You know, we have a, a young man named Caio Pamputos on our team right now. He's from Brazil and, and he was um, three time all American last year. Um, and so that's the first time ever at Georgia tech for a three time all American. And he is a hard worker. He is a great young man. He has a great head on his shoulders. And it's been fun to watch him grow and succeed and kind of break some barriers here at Georgia Tech, just in terms of three-time All-American and what he's been able to do. Um, and he's just a great young man. And, and there are many others. I always hate to point out one. Right, right, right. I feel like I missed somebody. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't mean for you to necessarily highlight, but just yeah. how has that personally inspired you when you see these great performances that these, these uh, athletes are, are doing? You know, how, how does that impact you? Well, it makes my job fun. You know, when they're achieving their goals and their dreams, it makes, it makes my job so much more fun because there's certainly a lot of heartache along the way. And a lot of people don't get to see that heartache. A lot of people just get to see the successes. And so um, when they're able to succeed, um, it, I, I mean, it gives me so much joy. And, you know, I, I will say one thing, as I go through championships and I, you know, even when I started coaching and, and, and more so now, you know, as an athlete, you only kind of race your races, right? But at championships, I'm racing like every day. <laughs> yeah. And I am exhausted. My husband's like, we go to the beach pretty much right after season because I'm just exhausted. Because when you're an athlete, you're taking care of yourself and you're doing your part for your team. But as a coach, you are racing every single event and you have the highs and the lows with every single person. And man, it is emotionally great and exhausting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. I can imagine that. I mean, you've got so many stories, you probably can't even think of them, but I can imagine what did watching Dara Torres at the Olympics, you know, being on that relay and winning gold with her, what is watching her break the age barrier? What does that mean for you? Yeah, it was awesome. It probably gave me the confidence to keep going to 2004, you know, because there, you know, wasn't a lot of money involved at all um, in our sport 20 years ago. There was some, but not a lot. And so, you know, to see, um, and she was way ahead of her time. I mean, she had the chiropractors and the massage therapists and the stretchers. And we were like, what's all that? <laughs> Everybody's doing it, right? So she right. was way ahead of her time in that. And so um, it gave me the confidence to be able to go for four more years. Yeah, so wonderful. All right, Maria, you want to ask the last question because we want to keep Courtney on her schedule sure. here. Yeah, yes. She's so organized. We don't want to <laughs> put stuff that. So uh, the last question is just, is there anything that you'd like to share with our listeners that we haven't already asked you? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. I think, you know, find people around you that support you that are positive and have fun with what you do. If you don't have fun, it's not worth it. So those are, those are my pieces of advice. All right, so here we go. So Courtney, you are already a sprinter. Are you ready for the sprinter round? Yes. Okay, cat or dog? Dog. Red or blue? Blue. Milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark chocolate. Kickboard or no kickboard? Kickboard. Mountains or beach? Oh, that's a tough one. I know, I'm it's... Go mountains. Uh, football or baseball? Football. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Coffee or tea? Coffee in the morning, tea in the afternoon. Hey, sounds good to me. Uh, sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Get up early. Early bird gets the worm. <laughs> she had that ready to go. Bang, yeah. bang. <laughs> bang, bang. Nail, nail polish or not? Toenail polish, not fingernail polish. Oh, that's, well, that's a unique answer. All right, Maria. Okay, I got the next one's Favorite color? Blue. Favorite pizza topping? Ham and pineapple. Favorite vegetables? Broccoli. Favorite swim complex in the U.S.? Georgia Tech. <laughs> no doubt. Favorite music genre? Uh, Zach Brown Band. Hmm. Not a genre, but I really enjoy listening to him. Because he's a little bit of both, right? He's country and mixed, so there you go. Uh, shoe size? 12 women's big feet, like Finn's. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, siblings? Yes, one younger sister. Favorite Star Wars character? Don't watch it. Okay. Aww. <laughs> That's okay. Can you cook? No, my husband does that. <laughs> and what word comes to mind or what word do you want to come to mind with, uh, with your swimmers when they dive in the water? Confidence. Mm. Beautiful. Ah, that is beautiful. a beautiful answer. Thank Good you so answers. much. Good answers. 
All right, Courtney, we wish you all the best and we're cheering for you. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me out. Have a great time, ladies. It's now time for the takeaways. Maria, you and I have heard the takeaways are the best part of the show. That's right, Kelly, because the takeaways are curated information, which is what we give to our clients when we coach them. If you would like to take your performance to the next level in health, life, or leadership, go to our website and schedule your free 30-minute consultation. Yes, just click on our coaching page and book there. We're looking forward to bringing out the champion in you. And now, the takeaways. Okay, well, Maria, you know, for me, that was so special. Having, yes. um, you know, seeing Courtney from a little girl now to where she is, it's just, it was really exciting. And, and yeah. I had, a, I took away a lot. Um, yeah. You know, I think, again, we'll just each do two, but what, what, were you, what was your first takeaway? Well, I mean, I think, she she talked about communication that that part of her success is being a great communicator and i think that's you know you know maybe if there's one thing in all of life <laughs> that that will help make you successful it's being a good communicator and that that's a pretty broad generalization I mean, it's like knowing when to say things knowing when not to say things knowing you know you know how but but being able to communicate what's inside you to another person such a huge trait of anybody who's successful at anything and it's one thing i work on in myself because i communicate a lot but it's not always quality and and, and i work on it in my team um who you know sometimes because i'm so forceful they're afraid to tell me things <laughs> so <laughs> communication hugely hugely important um, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's, um, she is a great communicator. She you is. Can tell that, like, I think her staff, she said her staff and her are very close and, yeah, you know, that family, you gotta, yeah. you're open, you got to be open, openly yeah. communicating. So that's great. My first takeaway was actually um, her making good choices. Like I asked her, you know, how have you gotten to where you've gotten? And I think this is such a simple one and not one that we hear a ton. Maybe we yeah. hear it in a different iteration context, right. but um it's basically you know that if you were giving advice to someone make good choices because that right there is small steps you know it's like every time you make a good choice because we get so many choices throughout our day you know yes do i do i stay in bed for 30 minutes this morning or do i get right up and do my workout that's a choice do i yeah. Yeah. eat, you know, the donut for breakfast or do I eat, you know, something that's going to sustain me throughout the morning. So it's right. like good choices are little is little, but I, I love that one. Yeah. It, just uh, yeah. Making good choices. Yeah. That, that know, is it's very good. simple, but <laughs> if you made good choices all day, what would your day look like, Maria? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be better. Uh, I, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> you know, you, you have to be reflective to make good choices sometimes. I mean, it's, you know, it's not always as easy as donut, no donut. Um, <laughs> because right. our lives are filled, you know, in, in the health coaching practice, a lot of it is about simplifying your choices too. You know, so if you right. only have, you know, if you only have a good, a spread of good choices in front of you, you know, am I going to walk or am I going to swim? Then you're going to make a good choice right. there versus am I going to stay in bed? But I, I, I agree that you know, making good choices and just thinking about doing, I think, you know, they say it in AA, doing the next right thing, which is making yeah. a good choice. So I love that, Kelly. I think that's right. It's so simple and, and so important. So um, what about your, your second one? Yeah. Second one. I loved, loved, loved her, her, her joy and her, um, her fascination, I guess, with being organized and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, being ready yeah, to go. <laughs> I she's love really that. passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because there is nothing. People, a lot of times, if you're organized, people will call you OCD or whatever. Baloney. Organized is great. And the thing about organization, and this is, this, you know, came to me when she was talking about it, is she had the confidence. The confidence was huge for her. She's able to do so much because she has confidence. But confidence, in part, comes from being organized. Like this morning, I you know, I had done my prep for this last night. So when I woke up this morning, I, didn't, I wasn't nervous or worried about this interview because I was organized. And I think, you know, being organized, you know, is, is a really, really great quality of champions. And it's some, it comes very naturally for some people and for other people, they have to work at it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I love, I love that. What did you think, Kelly? Yeah. I love to organize. Are you organized, Maria? I think of myself as organized. Yes. I, I, it's funny because, um, I'm married to your brother, who I think of as not organized at all. 
<laughs> um, and so I'm always trying to organize them, which annoys him because it's really a, just a, his organization is, he's very much more creative than I am. So I think he just, he, he's more uh, lateral <laughs> and I'm more, right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, but uh, on the other hand, he has helped me to be a little looser you know, and right. not, like I have right. rules, like I live by the rules. And if you don't live by the rules, I'm going to fall apart. So he's helped me right. to, to learn to disobey the rules or to loosen up the rules. So that's the other side of organization. Right. I don't, I don't know if I'm organized. Oh I my really gosh, don't. Kelly, you're organized. Are Am you kidding I? me? Yeah. Here's how you're organized. If it comes to your mind, you do it and it's done. <laughs> That's not organized. That that's is organized. Not organized. No, that is organized, I mean, Kelly. You know where everything is. If I ask you a question, if I need a, a, a vendor, you're like, oh, yeah, I got that. It's right there. You can you put your hands on it. Yes, Kelly, you're extremely I organized. I think, okay, because uh, Mark and I do things instantly. Like, if yeah. you want something done, it's done. But yeah. I don't know that that's organized. So, anyway, uh, I, have trouble, <laughs> I, I have trouble planning, like planning. But, anyway, I, I loved that one. I loved organized, and I'm not sure – you know, this is a, under self-awareness. So I guess to our listeners, I would ask you listeners, are, are you organized? You yeah. know, do you think you're organized? And what is a good definition of organized? I guess That's really, you know, we should do a show on that. We should yeah. think about that. I like are that. you organized? And what we'll, is organization? What's a good we'll research it. I yeah. love it. I love it. Great topic for a show. Okay. My last one. And the second um, one is self-care i just i thought that one and we're doing a show on that did you see my yeah yeah yeah, 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 we, yeah so i think we've been talking is, about it a lot yeah it's a new like it's so important for everyone um you know we're we you and i work sometimes with physicians for our coaching practice and that is the buzzword in the physician burnout world. Yeah. It's, it's self-care. So it doesn't matter if you're a female, you know, swim coach or, a, a you know, um, or if you're a male doctor, what, whatever you are, it's, it's self-care is so important. And I loved that she knew, hey, I need to go to bed early. When I yeah. have tons of stuff, that's self-care. That's that not is. pushing till 10 o'clock at night doing, you know, knocking out that one more thing. It's saying, yeah. I need a good night's sleep. I can do that in the morning. Yeah. So I, I just, I love self-care and we're going to, we're going to drill down on that one. Yeah. In, I like that too. And I yeah. think you have to have confidence also. I mean, I think, you know, what her, we talk about confidence, one of you to, to take care of yourself and you know, the three clients that I'm working with right now, self-care is something they all three have abandoned and they're all, you know, working on it. And it's, and you know, your life, if you, and I, and I can certainly address it because you know, just breathing and slowing down and, and calming yourself is important for self-care. And I think, yeah, self-care is so important. And obviously she couldn't do everything she does if she didn't have a full cup or at least a reasonably full cup. So yeah. And you fill your cup yeah. by, being, by taking care of yourself. And so many of us think that we care for others. So that's the important thing. We got to right. take care of, you know, our parents and our kids right. and our spouses and our friends. And then we get, you know, at the end of the line and that's not good because, no. you know, you got to just like the, the old, uh, oxygen mask in the airplane, you got to put it on yourself first before you can help others. So yeah. anyway, great interview, Maria. Awesome being with you as always. Love I you love so you. much. And we'll see you on the too. next one. Okay. Kelly. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast with host Kelly Palace and Maria Parker. Champions Mojo is produced by Cobra Media, and a new episode debuts every Tuesday. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Follow Champions Mojo on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Champions Mojo.